Good morning, family. I pray you are excited about today's message because let me tell you, we are going to get right into it. God is great. And so I want to welcome you here. Thank you for partnering with us. Please click the button. Help us destroy the works of the enemy in this hour and every hour because he he's on a war path. But you know what? He got no game. We got victory. It's ours. And so let's pray. Father, I thank you today for this message. May it be what we need to hear. Let our ears receive, our spirits receive, our eyes receive. Father, we thank you for your word today. We praise you that the distractions are removed. We rebuke the devil and we give you the praise and the glory today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Today's message I'm going to give you is about the 10 lies that you must rebuke today. And I have a couple of bonuses that, that I believe are very important as well. And I probably could expand this into like 30 things that you need to rebuke, all these lies. But today we're going to get right into it. And the first thing that, that we're just going to start right in the, in the book of Genesis, right in the very first book, it is so very clear. In the beginning, God, period. Now, the lie you must rebuke if you are just right straight new just checking this out like who is this what is happening here it is a lie that that god does not exist so that is that is something that that you need to recognize that the lie that there is no god oh you need to rebuke that that is a lie that needs to be rebuked we're not receiving that in the beginning god Period. So whether or not you believe, so well, I don't believe that's that's true. Well, it doesn't matter what you believe. It's still true whether or not you believe it. So you need to rebuke the lie so you can start living in the truth and receive what comes with the truth. Amen. So that's the first thing. Now, the second lie that you need to rebuke is found in the book of First Timothy. So we're going to go all the way to the New Testament, and I'm going to show you something. And the lie is this. Jesus doesn't love me. Many Christians and non-Christians alike believe this, but I'm going to demonstrate this to you. 1 Timothy chapter 1. And this is really important that you come to the place of of this revelation that that is a lie because in first timothy 1 15 it reads this there is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that jesus christ came into the world to save sinners of who am i chief if Jesus did not love you, why then would he have died for you? You may say, well, I don't believe that he did. Well, yeah. But once you believe it, then you'll get it. But you not believing it doesn't change it from being true. It is a lot. Well, Jesus didn't do that. And, and I don't believe in God. Well, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. And I've already taught on the traits of the foolish. So you can go in the, in the playlist of wisdom and find the, that particular message and, and then get set free from that as well. But you see here, Jesus Christ loves you so much that he died so you could be free. He didn't die so you could go be bound up in, in a religion doctrine with, with, the, with rule books that are thicker than the Bible. You know, the, that, that's, not what, that, that's not what he did, okay? He died so you could be free because of his love for you. And I know that, I know that, that for some of you that may be looking at, well, you don't know what I've done. No, but I, I know what he's done. I know what he's done for you. And and I don't need to know what what you've done because I know 
that he died for you regardless of what you've done. It's a lie when we start to put these things upon us. Well, you know what? I can never be free because, because I've done this, this, this. And, and I remember many years ago when I had a student that, that was a Marine sniper and, and he'd done bad things to bad people. It's, it's, it's a job. It's it, the military. They go through many things that we may not really, if you're civilian, may not ever really understand. And, and it was his job to take out bad guys. And, and he had a heart attack, which may make sense when you drink 64 ounces of Red Bull and Mountain Dew mixed. I don't know what that would taste like, but it doesn't sound very tasty. However, he had a heart attack, and I went to the hospital to see him and to pray with him. And, and he said, there's no way that Jesus could love me knowing what I've done. And said, it doesn't matter what you've done. What matters is that you accept him. And it's a lie that the devil will use against you to get you to believe that you are unworthy of saving because of the mess that you made of your life. You need Jesus to get you out of the mess. Otherwise, you will live in the bondage of your mess with no freedom ever. It will be hell because hell is, is, is where there is no God. And, and when you reject Jesus, you're just living in hell. It just happens to be on, on the earth before you die, and then, and then it changes. So if you are one that has been contemplating this, that how could Jesus love me? I'm here to tell you that he just does because he is love. God is love, and he bore his son to die for you. And so if you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now really is the best time for you to take that step. You will not be able to go forward in your life in the fullness of freedom without him. And so it's a very simple prayer. Now there is, there is the sinner's prayer. However, I, I take a different vantage point with this, that, that it's a relationship between you and the Lord you go to him and you simply, Lord Jesus Christ, I, 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 I made a mess of my life and I repent of it. And I need a Lord and Savior. And I'm asking you to be my Lord and Savior. Will you come into my life and save me? And you know what? He will. And it's really that simple. You can say it in your own words. It is not a template. It is not religion. It is you and him. And you already know that you need a savior. You know that you need to make, make room for him in your life. And it's a wonderful thing when you do. And so recognize that he does love you. And it's a lie to think that he doesn't. Now... My third lie that you need to that you need to rebuke is my sin isn't hurting anyone. Turn with me to the left to, to book of First Corinthians six. My sin isn't harming anyone. I can live in whatever lifestyle I want, and it's no harm. I'm not doing anything to anyone. So therefore, it's okay. It's just me, and because it's just me, it's quite okay. No, actually, it's not. It is not. And let me demonstrate to you. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, perverts, homosexuals, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, or revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. So your sin, you may think, is not harming anyone. The lifestyle that you're choosing is not harming anyone but you will not inherit the kingdom of God. And if you choose a lifestyle that is against God, then guess what comes with it? The, the consequences, 
There's always consequences that come with sin. So thinking you can live a sinful lifestyle and get God's blessings, you're deceived and under a strong delusion. So your sin is harming future generations because when you live in it and then you normalize the sin and the sin becomes law, which it still is not a law, it's just an ungodly written law that goes against God's laws, you are destroying future generations, period, straight up, end of story. That is a lie you need to break that your sin isn't harming anyone. It is, it's harming you. And it's harming every single person around you, just like unforgiveness. Okay, so when you deal and you choose to say, well, I'm not going to forgive because what they did to me, what they did to me, yeah, you know what? Let me tell you what happens with this. And I can speak truth on this all day long because this is what God had to do to get me out of my own mess. Oh my gosh, it was so deep. But here was the thing. Unforgiveness is a sin. It's witchcraft. All sin is witchcraft. And Within living in unforgiveness, let me just tell you that everywhere you go in unforgiveness, you're impacting someone else. You're infecting them because of the bitterness and the anger and the misery that you're living in. And nobody wants to be around you because you're just a miserable, mean person. Unforgiveness is mean. And the people that live in it are mean. And I was mean. And the sin of whatever it is outflows it's like it's like a pepper spray of meanness and sin and it has an impact so it does harm others because your behavior of what's in you just as much as love coming through you will impact people sin infects you don't want to do that the next point lie that you need to break is that god hates you oh hear this quite often now we've already been to first timothy now if god if if god hates you then why did he send his son to die for you and if god hates you why did he create you and if god hates you as a man or a woman then why did god create you in that way god doesn't hate you well god hate no he doesn't he god does not hate you in in the way that you may think now there's some t some places that god hates yes yes we, we recognize this but i'm talking more specifically in the way that the many believers well god hates me god god doesn't hate you at all he loves you job is a great example of that 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 all of the things that that job went through god was with job and demonstrated his love for him now when we really begin to see this, turn with me to the book of Romans, and it's in 5, 8. And I will demonstrate this. We've already been to first to first um, Timothy, but in, in Romans 5, 8, but God commandeth his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So, while you're sinning, Christ is still demonstrating his love for you by dying on the cross. Yet you think that God hates you. When God created you and saw in creation, everything that he created was very good. The color that you are is beautiful. The enemy is trying to use color to divide. Oh, this, 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 no. God did not make a mistake when he created you in the color that he created you. God did not make a mistake when he created you as a little girl to grow up into a woman or a little boy in a man. Your gender is not a mistake because God knew what he intended when he created you. The devil also has a plan to destroy and to get you to think that God hates you. So long as you think that God hates you, well, then you'll never do anything for God because you'll be believing the lies of the devil, which goes back to my previous message. <laughs> so when you begin to see this and you see how twisted the enemy is, that he will use anything. All he needs to do is create a wedge between you and the Lord, separate you and the Lord in any way that he can. And so long as you believe any of it, then you will be always on the wrong end. You'll be on the devil's end and not on the ways of God. So anything that comes in that would tell you that God hates you, you have to rebuke. And it can be very hard, especially for those of you that are single, believe in God for a spouse, right? Because when that spouse just doesn't come, you may think, God, God just really hates me. And I remember asking the Lord this many years ago, do you hate me that much? I remember asking him that, like, I, I'm praying for all these people. All these other people are, they're getting married. Like within six months, there were so many so many women that I prayed for within six months and I, this was like I don't even know how many years ago now and and it was like I know you hear my prayers what's up <laughs> and 
And then, and then he started showing me, and there's like, oh, I get it. Praise God. God did not hate me. God, and this was like years ago. Okay, so. So God, when we think that, that God is withholding something, we automatically think that God hates us. Lie. Rebuke that lie. There's something that God's showing you in that time of testing, in that time of waiting, in that time of pursuing. There's something that God has that is so great for you. But if you just believe that God hates you, well, then you just go hang out with Job's wife and go have wine on Wednesdays, right? No, God does not hate you. Now, number uh, Lie number five that you need to break. God's not answering my prayers. How do you know? Well, you know, because he just didn't give me my Maserati coming out of the sky. It's Maserati Monday. Where is my Maserati? I prayed for it and I do not have it. You just don't understand. God's not answering my prayers. Well, actually, it may just be. And when you say God's not answering my prayers, well, then that's a curse. Right? So we start to look at that. But then here's the thing. is this. There's reasons that your prayers may not be answered. And we already know out of Proverbs, I think it's 29, Proverbs 29 around there, that, that, that the sins of, that the prayers of the sinners are detestable to God. So God would not be answering your prayer if you're living in sin. So we have to first recognize that. What's sin? Anything that's not a God. Unforgiveness, bitterness, all the other things. Gossip is, is sin as well. But here's the thing. To just automatically believe, well, God's not answering my prayers. Well, no, maybe you're walking into the answer of the prayer. God's already answered it. You prayed it here, okay? So you prayed this prayer here, which there are many prayers. When I read, when I read the Bible, okay, so, and I have the... It's not, a, it's not around here. I have the uh, chronological yearly Bible. Okay, so every time when I read the Bible and, and I see things that, that God bless someone so-and-so with and so-and-so, I start praying, well, Lord, I would like that. And I, will, I want that for, for my, few, my children's 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 children. So I'm praying this. I am praying this. These are all legacy prayers that I'm praying to, to then ensure that, that the bloodline is covered. Because the enemy wants to do the same thing, right? So I had to pray that the bloodline's covered. So, so here's what happens. There are many prayers that I prayed many years ago that that now I'm walking into. So it's not that the prayers weren't answered. It was that when I prayed them, I was walking into the answer of them. So it's they're not they're they're not answered. I'm walking into the answer of them. So are you. So we have to remove the lie that prayer is not answered. Lie, lie, lie. There's a timing of everything. So if it's not answered and you think it should be based upon your understanding of time, then ask the Lord to pray. D then just pray that God ship time and circumstances for you so your prayers will be answered in the God's best time. And then recognize you need to be in God's best time for those best prayers to be answered in that best time so you can walk forward in the fullness of Him at that right time. See, it gets a little complicated. But as you go in wisdom, you begin to understand that it's not that God's not answering your prayers. It's you're still walking into the answers of them. And praise God that you're still walking. Amen? <laughs> you start to, start to see some of these things with God. That is, that is, it, it's, just, it's just a thing with God. Now, the next point I want to take you to. Uh, oh, boy. Next lie you need to, to just break off. Lie number six. I'm too old. You need to break off that lie. You need to break off the lie that you're too old. Moses was 80. Let's just be clear. Moses was, was 80. Um, Sarah and Abraham in Genesis were older than that. And um, mm, yeah, God still used them. So it is an excuse and a lie, well, I'm too, for what? What do you, no. You have what you need right now to do what God needs done through you. You could not have done it earlier in, in your life because you weren't at the place that you needed to be to do what God needed done. Does that make sense? So, so when we look at age, we look at age based upon, based upon a Gregorian calendar, right? God looks at age and time very different. So when you move into God's time and you move into where you are, then then it's then it becomes very different that Lord 
used me right where I am. And instead of focusing on your age, you focus on being used, you're going to see two to very different things. Then age is not really a thing. So 80 might just be the new 50 and 50 is the new 20, right? I mean, you can see many of these, these, these people that, that look absolutely fabulous as they age. They're like a fine wine, like Sophia Loren. Come on now, honey. Right. And, and so look at the wisdom that you've gained over your course of years that, that now you can apply to help these younger generations. But if you were then looking at where you needed to, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. So you are right where you need to be to be used by God in this exact time. And it's demonstrated proof that, that, that God, not that God uses anyone. We can recognize that, right? Jonah and, and, and all these other people in the Bible. But I will tell you this, one of my one of my oldest students was 85 and he graduated college at 85. Like that's awesome. I, it's just so awesome. Now, not everybody's 85 when they graduate, you know? Some of us are younger. I was 20. Not a big deal. What did it do for me? Mm, I don't know. Like my money back on some days, but we setting that aside, your age is is not as much of a factor as your willingness to be used. And that that is something that is so vitally important because many in the workplace are being, we may say, displaced or replaced. And we have to really look at what you have accumulated over those course of years in your life are things that, that the 20-year-olds and the millennials don't have. Okay, and I walked through this with, with my Bible teacher many years ago where people that were in their 30s were interviewing him for, for the job that they knew nothing about because they'd never been in that job before. And, and he found it very frustrating because he should have been at retirement age in, in the way of moving forward to the next stage, but he was still working and it was okay and things were moving along. But that there's, there seems to be a time where people believe that they've, that they've outgrown or outaged their usefulness which that is a lie from the pit of hell. Lie, 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 lie. I'm going to slice up those lies, lies, lies. Now, the next lie you need to rebuke is I can't because. Oh, let me tell you something. This was me when I, there was a church I used to attend many years ago. And I remember meeting with, with the women's group and I taught some stuff at the, at the ladies group. And one of them asked me about why I moved to Dallas. I said, well, God sent me here to start a ministry. And she said, well, why haven't you started? I said, well, I can't. She says, why? I said, because I'm not married yet. She looked at me and she said, what? I said, well, I'm not married. I was always told that, that you can't do anything until you're married and I'm not married. So, and she, she just stopped me and it was very eye opening. And, and she said, this is, she just had this, just this look on her face. And, and then she gave me this book, 10 Lies the Church Tells Women. <laughs> and, and let me just say that my life changed. It was like, oh, yes, Lord, thank you. So I can't is an excuse. But I didn't know I believed the lie that, that you know, you just, because you're a woman, you're a second-class citizen, like they want you to believe that you are, and, that you, and it has nothing to do with hating men. That's not my point, because I love men. But that's not my point. My point is that some of these things that I believed were blocking me. Now, Moses, he was like just the one with more excuses than anyone. Moses, uh, 410, 410 and Moses. <laughs> the book of Moses, which one, right? Um, this would be in Exodus... Four, and I'll just I'll read this to you. You kind of get the idea. Moses was just so full of it. I mean, oh my goodness. This is where when they toss the baby out, when the ba the basket toss the toss the bath water out with the baby, toss the baby out with the bath water. Moses, that's where that came from. Exodus. If you've ever wondered, I always wonder like when people say certain things. I'm like, where'd that come from? But here's what it says in four ten. And Moses said unto God, Oh wait, come now therefore, and I will send Pharaoh under. Send, send the end of Pharaoh, and thou may bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Now I'm in 411 of Exodus. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go into Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Well, who are you not, Moses? Moses had so many can'ts and excuses. I mean, come on, dude. God's given you the job. You got the job. Your job is not based upon your worldly resume. He brought his curriculum vita. Here, here it is. 
He didn't even do that. God doesn't, God does, God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the call. So praise God that you're probably not equipped. That's why you need the equipping to go out and do what God called you to do. If you, if you waited till you were fully equipped, honey, you'd never get there. You just would never, I would not, I would not be sitting where I am if I waited till I was equipped because all I hear is how equipped I am not. <laughs> Oh, for so long. Oh my gosh. But I can't. I can't. Why? Why can't you? It's an excuse. It's an excuse and it's a lie and you need to rebuke that. Why can't you? Well, because I don't have lie. I don't have the money. I lie. Um, I don't have the resources. Lie. Um, I don't have time. Lie. Lie. I can't lie. You already know the lie. You're just accepting it to make it an excuse so you never do anything. Lie lie well you know i don't lie and how do i know this because i will tell you this i was at the peak of tv five nights a week and saturday so i was on six days a week six days a week love. six days a week i was on tv i was on after john hagee and before peter popoff that's where i was prime time tv and you know what? I walked away. I walked away. I And I have every opportunity to go back and all this great in the world. But here was the thing was, was that if I looked at, well, I can't because I don't, we would not be sitting here right now. We would not be taking down devils like we do every day at 12 o'clock prayer. We would not have the resources that we do to get done what needs to get done. Is there always a resource need? Yes, there is. Always. Never not. Just the way excuse me, just the way it is. But if you say, I can't because, well, then you need to sit down and never do anything and stop complaining about what you don't have that you say, because it's a curse. I can't. No, it's a curse. It's a curse and it's an excuse. And you need to break it off because God, God, you're making yourself unusable by God. And I hear it so often. Well, you know, when I have all the money in the world, I will know you won't. You're just making excuses because you know what? If God can't trust you with the little things, he's surely not going to trust you with the big things. And if getting started is too much for you, then you don't deserve to do nothing for God. You need to just sit down and sit on the sidelines and watch the rest of us do it for you and get and, and take down all the devils because you just you just are the 95%. You've heard me talk about the 95%. Yep, they're not interested. They can't do it because they're weak. They are weak, undisciplined, small-minded people that will not never get up and do nothing for God because they make too many excuses. Well, I'm too, no, you just make it all about you. Excuse no, not interested. They're the 5% who will actually get up and do it. And, oh, well, you know what? No, don't want to hear it. If you're not ready to get up and do it, don't call because you're not ready. And I don't have that kind of time to give, to give you another pep talk. I'm not interested in that. I'll give you Holy Spirit wisdom so you can go forward. Get into the places that God has for you. But you know what? If you can't, then don't call because you can't. See, you've already established in your mind that whatever I give you, you still can't. So it's a waste of time. And I've been down that road. And I could give you the stories of the people that have every single excuse. Everywhere they go, they have excuses. Excuses. Lies are excuses. If you want it bad enough, oh, you're good. You'll get it. You'll do it. You'll do it. Surely people find a way to pay their, their, their phone bills before they pay their, their rent. People pay, people will live on the street corner paying the, with their cell phone bill more so than they pay rent. Studies continue to show that year after year, which is crazy. I give her that cell phone. Do I want more people calling me? No, I surely don't. Not on this phone that I, well, we'll set that aside. <laughs> but you get the idea. I can't. Now, you can, you just don't want to. You're just full of it. And you need to get, you just need to get rid of all of it. Now, lie number, lie number eight. Lie number eight. There is no hell. Ha, yeah, yeah, you need to rebuke that. Let me just take you to a couple places. Um, we'll start in Matthew. Matthew 24. Miss Olive is still here, by the way. We are, um, you're not hearing her. Treats, and she's all surrounding. So we got creative in this one. It's working out today for this way. There is no hell. Matthew 24, 46. I'm going to show you something. All right. 
I want to show you this and then I want to go to another place. Blessed is that servant whom, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Very, very, I say unto you that he makes him a good ruler over all his goods. This is not where I want to be. And I do not know. Maybe it's Mark. However, I don't think that's it either. It surely is not because there's not enough verses of that. However, I know that, let me find this because I've got it in another place as well. But... For those that say that there is no hell, well, why don't you go get, why don't you, why don't you just let us know when you die? Okay, how about that? Because we already know, man, there are many that are preaching that there is no hell, which is kind of interesting that they, how would they come to that place, right? But in here, it tells us, and I'm going to find this in another place. So I have this written down, and I'm going to really need to pray about what is happening here. Okay. Okay, in Daniel 12, 2, it reads to us this. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now, also in Revelation, there is reference as well. And it's also in Psalms, and I think it's around Psalms 37. It's in another Bible that I haven't highlighted. But let me recognize this. I'm not going to teach on heaven and hell. That's, I'm just helping you know Jesus today and rebuke the lie so you can get to these further places in the Lord. But the lie that you need to rebuke is there's no hell. Why is that important? Because if there's no hell, where are you going when you die? Which would mean that any of your sin is, of, is, is okay because you're not going to really go anywhere when you die. So there is a hell. Rebuke the lie that there is not. Just move on with it. There is a, there is a hell and you don't want to have to die to find out that there is. You need to know Jesus so you can ensure that you don't end up in hell. <laughs> That's really just the best way that I can just tell you of that right now. Why, why try to prove me wrong and then find out otherwise? doesn't even make sense, right? And the only way you're going to get to get get there is through knowing Jesus Christ. The only way you're going to get to the Father is through Jesus Christ. You may think that you're going to circumvent Jesus Christ and get to the Father. You, you will not, okay? So let's just rebuke that right now. That is a lie. There is a hell, and you do not want to end up there. This is why we do the work that we do to help you know Jesus, to help you get out of the life of the pit and the misery that you've been living in so you, you can get to the fullness of the Lord and move in that direction which leads me to the tenth lie that you need to break and rebuke is that once saved always saved that is a lie because just because you are under grace as many people say well I'm under grace so that makes it okay yeah but in the book of Hebrews somewhere around 13 13 it's either 5 8 or around 13 that yes Jesus Christ is the same today yesterday and today and forever but he also tells us that if you continue to live in sin and you know it's sin there's no mercy for your sin so if you are doing something that is against the will of God, then you're living in debauchery and you're living out of, uh, out of the book of Romans with a reprobate mind, thinking that it's going to go so well for you. It will not. We are told to walk out our salvation with fear and trembling. So if you are not living the life of, a, of, of what a disciple of Yeshua is, and you are moving away from those things of living a righteous life, then the truth is not in you. You are a liar. And on that day, Matthew 7, 21, Lord, Lord, he will say, get away from me. I never knew you. See, this is going to separate the religious from the relationship. This is what's going to separate the, the followers from Christ of any other religion. Because many in other religions are, are into the regulations. Say 50,000 Hail Marys, say this and, and be, be at the prayer at, and for, for this time, this time, this time, this time. And do all of, all of these, these things that are religious rituals that guarantee their, their place and whatever that place is for, for those people that follow those religions. But here's the thing is that, is that there is, there is a heaven and there is a hell and if you are if you are rejecting the truth of Jesus Christ and you are moving in a way well you know what I was I was saved you know I was I was like an hour old and you know they they sprinkled which first of all the word baptize in Greek means immerse so if you were not immersed not sprinkled like like other religions where they just sprinkle with like I went through as a kid mm, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about are you did you go did you go under like Jesus Christ did and come up? We we need to be baptized in water and in truth and in spirit. 
and fire. We may also go that far. So as we're looking at this, if you say, well, once saved, always saved. I did it when I was a baby and then I never looked back. I've never read a Bible because I don't read. And it's not that I can't read. It's just that I don't want to read it because it's so boring and I don't understand it. And I don't want to get a message Bible that I could read. And the King James, I just don't like him. And and so I'll just watch a movie. But you know what? I don't want to watch the movie and, and the Passion of the Christ. That's too hard. And I don't like Mel Gibson. And so I just can't do that either you know what, it's not going to go so well for you. Get coming to know Jesus, accepting an altar call and celebrating at the bar will not work. And you need to know that. There's, there's a big debate about once saved, always saved. And, and yes, we could make, we could, we could sit here for a couple hours on that one. But we're not going to do that. I'm going to tell you, you need to know Jesus and you need to walk like it. You need to walk like you know him because you don't want to dismiss him. And and I remember being told back in 2005 that there were going to be people in heaven that I would be shocked at. And then there would be people not there that I would equally be shocked at. And I thought, wow. Hmm. Hmm. And it's always been kind of a curiosity. that, But I don't want to find out too soon. I'll just find out when it's my time, but here we got plenty of work to do. So rebuke that lie. Now those are the 10 lies, but I'm going to give you two more just for good measure. Lie. Speaking in tongues isn't for today. Many would tell you tongues aren't for today, that they died with the, that the whole gift of tongues and baptism of the Holy Spirit is not for today, much like, much like the dinosaurs died and, and the apostles and the prophets don't exist today, except Jesus tells us in the book of Mark, all who believe will speak in tongues, prophesy, cast out demons, lay hands on the sick and heal them. And, and so if Jesus said it, should be Mark, if Jesus said it, then that kind of settles it. And I've had numerous conversations with people say, well, my pastor, I'm not interested in what your pastor said. I'm interested in what your Jesus said. What did Jesus say? Jesus has said it, right? Jesus said it, that ends it. So if Jesus, if Jesus said it and Jesus said it, then, then that's it. Okay. So how do we know this? What did Jesus say? We can go uh, Mark 16, 15, and Jesus said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He doesn't say just you pastors. Go ye. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not is damned. Ooh, those are fighting words. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick. And they so shall recover. All right. So there you go. So these are the words of Jesus. Some of you may have it in a red fine print. Jesus said it. So for those that say it's not for today, I would encourage you to read Joel, read the book of Acts, study this, read the words of Jesus, and then go to a church where they believe in that and then ask them. And I remember going through this years ago and what happened with me, and I'm not going to get too far into testimony about this, but um, I received baptism of the Holy Spirit. I didn't even know what it was, to be honest with you. I was, I was dating this guy, and he asked me, he, he asked me, you know, what do you think of it? I didn't know. I was at a church where they didn't believe it was for today, and I just changed the subject because I didn't know what them tongues were. <laughs> I had no idea. And then, and then uh, I was go kept going to this Bible study, and then and I, I received it. I mean, I didn't even know what it was. They just laid hands on me, and I received it. And... And so then um, I went to pastor, and, and I asked pastor, and he's, we don't believe that's for today. And I'm like, but it happened to me. And he didn't believe that it happened to me. And that was kind of a strange thing. And so so then the, the, the uh, few months later, I was dating this different guy, because the other guy was like not really a thing. We went out a couple of times, like twice. But then this other gentleman that I that I went, he did not believe. He he believed that tongues existed, but not for today. Even though he knew people today that speak in tongues, which was kind of a weird thing. So I said, listen, and I didn't really understand it. I said, I'm going to ask my people and you ask your people. I said, but you can't just go to your church and ask your pastor because your pastor that doesn't believe in it is just going to solidify. So I took it serious. I went to one one pastor that I knew. I said, would you ever would you, would you ever date or marry somebody who didn't speak in tongues? And and what was interesting was those that speak in tongues, they all said no. But those that didn't speak in tongues said yes, which I thought was kind of curious. So I still didn't have all my answers. So I was stayed up all night, got in all these Yahoo chat groups, and I started asking all these questions and, and researching and researching. And because my background, college professor, I wrote a paper. I wrote a 16 page paper and I sent it to this guy that I had been dating. I sent it to him and he called me the next morning and he said, where'd you get this? 
I wrote that. When did you write that? What do you think I've been doing all night? I needed to do my research so I would be solidified in what I believe. I know what happened to me. I know that it's true. I know that God answered my ignorant prayers. I know that when they laid hands on me, this is what happened, that God gave me this gift, that everything seemed to go from black and white to being in color, that I was able to move in a way where no longer was I in the waiting pool, but I was in the, va the vast depths of the Lord. And I know that it is true. And I know that it is real because his word says, and Jesus Christ said, all who believe will speak in tongues. I said, that's should settle it. Well, he didn't quite. <laughs> I'm on fire all about this. And this was like, well, good for you. Needless to say, that ended that. But I sent the paper. I said, won't you read that paper? I got Joel in there. I got all, I got all the people in there. Nope. So rebuke the lie. It is for end and rebuke the lie that it's not for you. It is for you. Now, that was point 11, but I got one more just because, just because God is so good in what he's given us today. God has a purpose for you and we need to, you really need to know that. Now I'm going to give you the rest of the scripture because this is my love hate relationship. It really has nothing to do with the scripture itself really, but how people operate within the scripture. Go with me to Jeremiah 29, 11, but we're going to start in, in before that, because this is the part that, that is, mm, well, we just have to start in this. So here's the deal, 11, but we're going to go 11 to, thir to 14. For I know the thoughts I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and, and not of evil to give you an expected end. Other, other scriptures say, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans not to harm you, but plans to prosper you. Okay, great. So God's plan is prosperity for your life. Praise God, right? Then ye shall call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye see, search with, for me with all your heart, and I will be found by you, saith the Lord. So if you're not searching the Lord, you're not going to know. So, so when people say, oh, God's got, a, God's got a plan for you. Yeah, what's the plan? Well, I'm waiting for God to give it to me. What are you waiting for? Are you seeking God? It's such an excuse. It's a lie. It's such, it's such an insult. Well, God's got a plan for you. Yes, he does. What's the plan? Well, I don't know. Why don't you know? Because I'm waiting on God. Why are you waiting on God? You need to press in. Read the following verses. See, so the lie is that God doesn't have a plan for your life because he does. The lie also is that you're waiting on God. No, you're not waiting on God. You're just procrastinating, doing everything else, not seeking the Lord. Because when you seek him and find him with all your heart, he will be found by you. So if God hasn't been found, it's because you're not seeking diligently enough to get in there. You got to press in. You got to press in. Okay, so God's got a plan for your life. You got to know that. You want the plan, you got to get it. If I told you there's a million dollars worth of gold sitting across the street, are you just going to sit there and wait till God go, goes and gets it and gives it to you? No, you probably get up. You probably put press pause on Breaking Bad that you've been watching for the last five years and you go get it. <laughs> God's got a plan for you. Your job to get it. So, the lies you must rebuke, that there is no God, there is, there is a God. Jesus loves you. Your sin is harmful to you and everyone around you. God does not hate you. God is answering your prayers. You are not too old and you can. There is a hell. Oh, hold on. Nine was actually, I'm already saved. Ten, tongues aren't for today. Eleven, God has a purpose for you. And it's too hard. Break that lie that it's too hard. Oh, it's too hard. Yep. I hear that a lot. I hear many people say, I had no idea walking with Jesus would be this hard. Well, then stop doing it if it's too hard and you can't hang. Come back to that 5%. I've heard it so many times. People used to call me. And I know when someone's fallen away, I already know because they stop asking questions. People that are interested ask questions. Those that don't, don't. It's very evident by the questions that people ask and what they want to talk about. People that aren't interested in God don't talk about the things of God. They don't. They talk about everything else. Most people love to talk about themselves. That is their number one subject. But, but, but if it's hard, yeah, it is. And if you can't hang with the hard now, you surely can't hang when it's going to get any harder. So you may as well just quit now. And I tell people that. They used to call all the time. One gentleman, he's like, I had no idea it would be this hard. I said, well, I told you. I told you it would be hard. I told you it would be the hardest thing you ever do. And if they hated him, they're going to hate you. Yeah, but I didn't know how hard. Well, now you know. So what are you going to do? Well, you know what? I'm not going to be at Bible study anymore because you know what? I, it's just, it's a lot. All right, then. Well, hey, you know what? I love you. We're still here. We'll still be preaching. And, and you know what happened? This was in 2005. 2017, I get a call. 
You think there's room for me? There is. God still has a plan for you. It's a matter of whether or not you want to do it when it's hard. Most people want a pill instead of doing the exercise. You want, you want the fullness of the Lord? You've got to get up and you've got to get in it. And you're going to have to do what is required. Age is of no factor. It's how bad do you want it? Do you want it? Most people don't want it bad enough. They want the perks with no works. They just want, they just want their own glory. But they don't, they don't want to tell his story. See, you get into all this stuff. It's about him. And that's why it's hard. The hardest part of it is when they say it's hard, it's hard because they don't want to lay themselves down to be about him. That's really what the struggle is and why it's hard. I shouldn't have to go through this. Why shouldn't you? He did. He went through much harder for you and you're crying about how hard it is for you. Really? As you sit there in your nice, comfortable home with a roof over your head and a car to drive and, you, and, and you're outside the elements and all this stuff and you want to come sit down. No, you, you write it. You need to move about your business and go sit in that fluff church over there where they're just going to tell you how pretty you are because you are not going where the, where the big kids go. Mm -mm. See, you got to rebuke these lies because what God asks for you is going to take something. You can go back to my message about the doors and really see many people don't know the level of doors and how many doors there are because you know what? It's hard and you got to go through the doors. Oh, you know, it's so hard to push the door. Well, then don't go through it. Don't go through it. So we got to rebuke these lies because the lies will deceive you and destroy your life if you don't. So, is it hard? Yes. It was hard for Jesus. But you know what? He, he did it when it was hard, and he did it, and he overcame it, and he testified. And we here we are, celebrating by the blood of the Lamb. So it doesn't matter how hard it is. Is he worth it? If he's worth it, it's, it you'll get there. Because he's got a purpose for you to glorify him. And in that, you're going to see what you're able to do through him because he gives you the, the strength to do all things. So to God be the glory. So that's my message. We need to pray. That's I got to stop talking. We need to pray. Father, I thank you today. I thank you that regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what it feels like to our flesh, regardless of what it sounds like, that we rebuke these lies. We rebuke the lie that you don't exist. We rebuke the lie that it's too hard. We rebuke the lie that you aren't with us. We rebuke the lie that you've left us. You are here. You will never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you that you give us the strength that we can do all things in you who gives us the strength. Father, we thank you that we have the strength of the mustard seed faith to rebuke those 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 trials those storms trying to come against us father we give you the praise and the glory that every lie is a lie we rebuke it we put it under our feet and we thank you today father that we stand on the firmness of your word i thank you father the age is of no factor gender man or woman is of no factor i thank you father that you equip the called that we don't have to go and try to get there to come to you that you call us to you so you can help us get there for you so you get the glory so i give you the praise and the glory for this i thank you father Father, that we are not without. I thank you that you are raising up your 5%. Father, we thank you for the rest. That, that they may be on their way. We just pray. We just pray over them. Just lift them up to you. But we thank you, Father, that you're doing a new thing right now in this time. For those that you've called, those that are ready, those that are willing to get trained, those that are willing to say, yes, I have a willing spirit. I am willing to be trained. I'm, I have a teachable spirit. So I thank you, Father, that we rebuke the lies. We, we are not Moses, Father. We rebuke all the excuses. We rebuke the lies. We rebuke the excuses. We rebuke the ways that we've settled in ourselves. Father, we are not settlers. And we thank you, Father, for making the way for us. So I give you the praise and the glory today. I thank you that you have a purpose for every single person that you created from before the foundation of the earth. And I thank you that it is good. I thank you that it is of you. I thank you, Father, that it is, that it is one of prosperity and peace and the ever flow outflow of the goodness of you for all the days of their lives. And I thank you that you so shall make it happen as they diligently seek you with all their hearts. So Father, today is the greatest day that we live and I thank you for it. I thank you that you made the way for us to testify of you as we rebuke those lies. We get up today and I thank you, Father, that you have given us this word today to move us to a new place in you, to do a new thing for you, the God that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I thank you that we rebuke the lies when they say, you can't do that. Oh, honey, I sure can't. Watch me and watch God move. So I thank you, you're moving today. I thank you that you're moving in our lives. You're moving to our lives and you are moving through our lives for, for your kingdom namesake. So, Father, today we thank you, we honor you, and we are so treasured by you. And I thank you, Father, that, that we can move like Job and stand, and we just rebuke his wife, 
and the fullness of the foolishness. We are not entertaining the foolishness, but we come before you today to recognize who and whose we are. That greater is in, is in he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we so shall testify of your goodness, for we confess with our mouths that you are good, that you are God, and that we are your children today, tomorrow, and for all the days that you allow us the breath by your Holy Spirit. So, Father, we come before you today praising you, honoring you, and thanking you that we walk in the truth, that, 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 that this word, that this word is the truth that we so shall live by, walk by, and that we rejoice in for all the days of our lives. So, Father, I thank you for these things. I give you the praise and the glories. We pray them all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I pray that you are up on your feet today, that you get up and every lie coming against you, you rebuke and you say, not on my watch. You get behind me, Satan. You are not receiving receiving this. This is a lie. I am going places for the Lord. It doesn't matter if I got $5 or 500 million. It does not matter. You have everything within you that God has given you and you stand up and you rejoice. It doesn't matter if you're a supermodel or a supernova. It does not matter what you have or do not have. You have the Lord in you and you got his word. This is all that you need to get to the fullness of him on this day and every day. So if you need to clip out these prayers and you pray this so you can be up and doing the will of the Lord, Lord, you do that. And God is answering your prayer. So don't you sit there as a victim. God said, no, he surely so is. He has already done it. He's already made the way. You need to get in agreement with him and position yourself to walk in that so you can enter into the fullness of him on this earth. There's a bunch of liars. I don't care about the liars. The liars are liars are liars and that's what they do. I walk in the fullness of the truth and so do you. And you got to own it, live it, breathe it, and let it move through you on this earth as you go forward. Nothing can take away what is inside of you when you're walking with the things of the Lord unless you give it that power. He said, not on my watch. So you get up, you get out there and you move in the fullness of the Lord. And I tell you, it so shall go well with you as you come in and as you go out. Amen and amen. And to God be the glory. You know what? This is great because we got 12 o'clock prayer in about four minutes. And woo, these prayers today are going to be fantastic. But you can join us every day at 12 o'clock. That is at 214-586-0411. Every single day, go to Julie Blair Ministries. You'll find the country codes and you just dial in. Julie Blair Ministries, there's so many other things that are there as well as I teach live every single Thursday night. We've been in the kingdom, expanding it, growing in it, moving as the operators that we are. I call it, you know, spiritual special forces because we are advancing God's kingdom. We're not playing church. We are the church and we take it by, we take it, we take it by force, honey. That's how we get it done. So I invite you to, to join us God bless you today. You get up and you rejoice in the Lord that you serve because he died for you and you are, and you have so much that God is going to do to your life. So praise God for you. I thank you guys all for being here today. Just rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. And I look forward to the next message that he has for us. I know it's going to be equally as good to help us all get up and move in him. Love you all dearly. And I'll be back with the next message. Bye, everybody. God bless you.